Good evening, members of the Board of Education, County Executive George Latimer, Dr. Barbara Ferraro, Superintendent of Schools, administrators, faculty, parents, friends, and our honored guests, the class of 2020. On behalf of the Rhinex School District, I welcome you to the 125th commencement ceremony of Rhinex High School. Please join us in singing America the Beautiful. Teachers, staff, members of the Board of Education, parents, siblings, friends, and the Ryanair class of 2020, welcome to the long-awaited commencement exercises, and my dearest thanks to all of you. It has been an absolute honor and privilege to learn, explore, and grow alongside my fellow graduates for the past 12 years at Ryanair. My heart is so full. First and foremost, I think we all deserve a hearty pat on our backs, don't we? We did it. As freshmen or as first graders at Daniel Warren, this day was so far away. We thought that it would never come. And then with the health crisis, the closer that they got, the slower the time went by, and it is finally here. The day of both the celebration of our accomplishments and a, and a liberation to pursue our future dreams. Here, the 90 members of this class stand proud of the achievements that we have strived for over the past four phenomenal years. We have intellectually challenged ourselves by taking APs and higher level classes and delved into our interests from participating in theater to mock trial and learned the value of teamwork through athletic competitions and games. We took responsibility outside of the classroom, performing over 12,000 community service hours. We are indeed a small class, perhaps Reinick's smallest in several years, but our achievements are certainly not. However, as I was writing this down, I just couldn't help realizing something else. The true Reinick experience that I encountered from the first day I stepped onto the campus was much more than the learning experience that I would take place within the four walls of the classroom. It was the people that I shared these years with. The real essence of the Rhino experience is the journey. The journey we made together and the journey we'll now face on our own. Throughout the years of this journey, we have lost and made new friends, made some dumb decisions, and got into some trouble. We spent all night playing Animal Crossing we're watching TikTok videos. We binged West Wing episodes and came late to school. And then we became masters of procrastination, started working on the assignments the morning they were due, and collectively enjoyed the week of suffering. 
that is the AP exams. This year, we went back in time to our innocent childhood on the senior trip, but also took responsibility as near adults, becoming big brothers and sisters for a day. Not to mention that sweet, sweet victory on the junior senior day last year. Looking back on this year alone, it was not the most exciting year of our high school. The year that we were told to be the most memorable and the most pivotal year of our lives, we stayed in our home practicing social distancing. Yes, we also missed junior senior day and the senior prom. However, it also gave us time to look back on how much the Reinick community means to us. Those typical school day mornings when we dragged ourselves from bad half asleep to our first classes, saying hello to each other and chatting for a while, they all became a memory. It was only as the year wore on and we were deprived of each other that we understood what we had taken for granted. And we felt the importance of each other on our journeys more than ever. As we carry on in our journeys, we will go off to college, join the workforce or military, and pursue our callings in many different ways. Whatever path we may choose to take, we know that we won't be put on a pedestal. We will once again stumble and fall. There will be fear and frustration as we face the tremendous odds against us that might discourage us from taking the chances. However, we know we're all going to make it in the end. Over the past 12 years, but this year especially, we've struggled but learned how to overcome. We were hurt but also encouraged by each other. We cried and then we laughed thanks to each other. Even through this time of chaos, the absence of each other did not break us but only reinforced us to remember the value of community. These experiences have certainly shaped us who we are today and motivated us to pursue our values and goals no matter the obstacles in our path. Perhaps we might not always act as our mature best, but there is no doubt that we will have all grown and grown together and we will continue to grow still. As we put an end to this journey today, we take our first step into a new phase of our lives. We have no idea what will be ahead of us, but we are more confident than ever to go out there and make a difference in this world. Congratulations, Ryan and Class of 2020, and thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm honored to share a few words with you on this, your very special and very different high school graduation. What a year it has been for all of us, and especially for you, the class of 2020. You left our high school on March 13th with hopes of being back to celebrate those special senior year milestones with each other. We waited and waited and each week listened carefully to the governor's message, hopeful to hear that the doors would be open soon. When we finally learned that being back on campus was not a reality for this year, you quickly refocused, working with your principal to stay connected and celebrate while being apart. You accomplished that and more with creativity and strength of character, confronting each challenge with courage and flexibility. Your leadership has been evident during this pandemic. Your outreach to those in need, your support of our district's younger students, and your concern for one another have reinforced the uniqueness of your class, illustrating the power and strength of teamwork and collaboration. Additional challenges lie ahead. I'm not concerned. I'm confident that with such caring, generous, and community-minded individuals, like the members of the Reinach class of 2020, we are all in very good hands. I offer my warm congratulations and good wishes to you for a lifetime of happiness and success, and thank you for being kind, 
concerned citizens of our community. And now I'd like to invite our county executive, George Latimer, to the podium. It is through Mr. Latimer's efforts that this fantastic graduation celebration became a reality for Rhineck High School. Mr. Latimer, on behalf of the Rhineck High School Class of 2020, I thank you for your ongoing support of the Rhineck community and the generous spirit in which it is always offered. Mr. Latimer, thank you. I hear a lot of Panther pride. Let's hear a little more of it. I happen to live up the block, but let's teach all these garnet households what Panther pride sounds like, right? This is, this is a special day for us as it is for you. There is no graduating class that ever had anything like this. And it's fair to say that you've been cheated out of the traditional senior year experience. But this experience will mark it as something that classes behind you will wish that they had because it was different and you own it. This is the memory of the class of 2020 that nobody can take away from you in all the years that are yet to come. When you were at Daniel Warren, when you were at Bellows, in the middle school and then into the high school, you moved from step to step and you did it successfully. And that's why they call today a graduation. You have graduated up from certain levels of education to a higher level that's being certified today. But they also call today a commencement, which means it's the beginning of something. And the classic, it's the beginning of the rest of your life. This is the beginning of the accomplishments that you're going to have individually. Going to college, for those of you who are going on to college and, and the experiences you have yet to have, this is a beginning stage, not just a graduation stage. This year was a tough year for all of us, and I will tell you that I graduated high school from a little school down the road called Mount Vernon High School, 814 people in my graduating class. We were going to have our 50th reunion this year. Now, I know that a 50th year reunion isn't as cool as a senior prom, but we missed our 50th year reunion like you missed your senior prom. But we've been communicating on Facebook, and we're all pretty old now. We don't look as thin as we used to. I'm fortunate I got a few hairs in my head. Many of my classmates don't. But what we connected at 50 years was that we were once all together. We knew each other. We loved each other. And we were together during this high school experience. And even with all the other things that happened in life that happened from that day to this day, we look back on that high school year, particularly that senior year, and it's a very special memory. And that memory is yours, and no, no COVID disease can take that away from you. I'm glad we could do this today. I hope it's fun. I'm sure there'll be a party or two later, maybe, I think, that you'll enjoy yourself at. But congratulations, class. Lay on those horns and go out there and have a great graduation. Our keynote speaker, Ryan Pinnell, ran at class of 2010, pitched for the varsity baseball team for four years. He was a two-sport athlete his junior and senior year, playing both basketball and baseball, and he was inducted into the Rhineck Hall of Fame in the fall of 2017. During his time as a Rhineck Panther, Ryan was an active member of the school community. Beyond his integral contributions to the success of the sports program, in his life after Rhineck, he played Division I baseball at Elon University, and after earning his BS in exercise science, he was drafted into the Tampa Bay Rays in the 22nd round of the MLB draft. Ryan is now an integral part of the Rays front office, using his expertise in exercise technology in the service of the team. He made the long journey from Florida to be here with us to celebrate our milestone. Please welcome our keynote speaker, Rhineck alum, Ryan Pinnell. Thank you, appreciate it. Woo, oh boy. This is definitely different, but it's fun. Um, first off, just congratulations class of 2020. Um, thank you, Dr. Wilson, Dr. Ferraro, 
members of the Board of Education, and especially the class of 2020 for honoring me today and giving me the invitation to speak to you at your most important ceremony. Also, a big thank you to my family, my dad, my mom, and my brother Chris, for all your love and support throughout my life and moving forward. First piece of advice, always thank the parents. So, especially mom. So, had to get that out of the way. <laughs> also, a big thank you to Miss Merkel for inviting me back here to speak to you today. And my last thank you goes to my fellow graduates of 2010. When I first received the phone call from Miss Merkel inviting me to speak here today, my initial response was, wow, how many people turned you down before you got to me? I said that not out of modesty, but out of respect for the 120 or so other fantastic individuals I graduated with 10 years ago. That class had multiple Ivy League graduates who are now doctors, lawyers, physical therapists, artists, executives, you name it. Any one of them is just as deserving to speak to you today as I am. And I was grateful for the chance to get to know each and every one of them. But you guys get the guy who works for a baseball team, so. As some of you know, I currently work for the Tampa Bay Rays. Originally, I planned to have this great analogy about how the Rays would currently be in first place over the New York Yankees in the AL East for about a quarter of the payroll. A small market team making big noise throughout the league and proving that it's not the size of your wallet that wins baseball games. And of course, the Rays parallel would be Reineck in this scenario. While a small school, which I'm sure many of you heard your whole life, Reineck's graduates make just as much noise in our universe as students from any other school. However, if you've been watching the news, you might have noticed the world is drastically different than it was three months ago. There's no baseball for me to compare Reineck to, which has caused me to change this speech a few times here and there. Quick disclaimer on the upcoming topics is I don't have life figured out and I'm learning as I go each and every single day. That being said, my short time in the real world does offer me some insight as to what to expect. First, even with success comes challenge. To speak to my story a little bit. I was offered a scholarship to play Division I baseball, a huge success for me personally. This came with the challenge of competing against the best players in the country, and I failed initially, a lot. Take that a step further when I got drafted. Another huge success, but an even bigger challenge competing against an even better group of players. When I was released from the Rays, I was offered an internship in their front office. Another success, with that came new and different challenges that I had never experienced before. Then I received full-time employment, and I was charged with overseeing our entire video operation, and I even had to oversee interns, me. I was just an intern three months ago, and now I have to hire people. That was terrifying. Then I was promoted to my current position. Again, another success that comes with new challenges each and every single day. And I fail at times. But with each failure comes a learning opportunity, an opportunity to grow and to improve. Embrace the opportunities and embrace the challenges. They are no doubt uncomfortable but get comfortable being uncomfortable. That is how you grow. Second, control the controllables. So much of this year has been out of our control and at times it is very hard not to get frustrated. Moving forward in life, there will almost certainly be times when things do not go your way and they will be out of your control. However, there are a couple of things that are always in your control. Those two things are attitude and effort. And as my college coach would always say, those are not negotiable. Things may not always be working in your favor, but approaching each situation with a positive frame of mind and giving it your all can go a long way. Finally, I firmly believe that attending Reineck more than prepared me to tackle this crazy world. And to be honest with you, and I'm sorry to say it, I think it had very little to do with the actual content and knowledge I absorbed in my four years. Although, for those of you who remember Ms. Maurer, teaching us the names of the presidents in order has helped me win a few bar bets here and there, so not all the content was lost on me. The thing is, information is essentially the same regardless of where you get it from. 
But the secret sauce that makes Rhinec what it is lies within its people and its community. Having such small class sizes really allows your teachers to form relationships with students and extends beyond the classroom. Even though at times they might know a little bit more about you than you would like them to. It is very apparent to me that Rhinec's teachers, coaches, and staff not only enjoyed their jobs, but they generally wanted their students to succeed. For example, when Ms. Merkel called me about giving this speech, we discussed my humanities class 10 years ago, and she remembered each and every person in that room, and I thought that was very remarkable. Rhinec allowed me to have experiences that I wouldn't have had at a larger school. I was in the concert band. I took part in the musical production of Peter Pan my senior year, which I am very proud of to this day. Shout out flight crew. These experiences allowed me to interact with students from different, with different interests and ambitions from my own, something I did not realize the benefit of until many years later. Reinick also allowed me to form unbelievably strong friendships as our class grew up together. From Daniel Warren all the way through high school, we went through everything together. Admittedly, I don't get home to see my friends and family as much as I would like to, but when I do see my friends, we don't skip a beat. I met up with two of my friends from Rhinec in Austin last year, and it was like we were never apart. We talk sports, we talk trash, we talk girls, and maybe we talk about our current jobs. Such friendships are extremely rare, and I encourage you to do everything in your power to keep them going long after you leave this place. I want to share one experience that I will never forget, and that is entirely due to this community. The day I was drafted was one of the mo most special days of my life thus far, and I remember it in great detail. This also happened to be the same day my brother Chris in the Rhinec baseball team was set to play a regional playoff game. While watching the game, I found out I was drafted in the 22nd round by the Tampa Bay Rays. I found out with three of my best friends who I grew up with, Benny, Justin, and Mike. My mom was standing 30 yards away, and she was the second to know, and then my dad. The next couple of minutes were a whirlwind, whirlwind of hugs, congratulations from family, friends, past teachers, past coaches, and even people I'd never met before. So many people who helped me along the way were integral parts to my success as an athlete and as a person were there in that moment at Rhinec, where it all started. That day was made so special because of this unbelievable community, and I am grateful to own such a memory. And to top it off, I was able to watch my brother close out the game and help Ryan continue its most successful baseball season in history. Ryan will always hold a special place in my heart. It instilled in me a powerful sense of community that I try to pay forward in my current life. The people and the community of Ryan challenge us to be the best that we can be. This sense of community is more important now than it has ever been. As you go forward, you can never lose sight of it. You are Ryan you will always share a common bond with your classmates, as well as with the alumni who have come before you and the students who will come after you. Help expand this community of support, of love, of excellence, wherever you go, and the world would be better because of it. If I could leave you with one piece of advice, and this is the best advice I've received so far, it is this. Uh, when someone is speaking to you, listen. They deserve your absolute, undivided attention. Every single person you will speak with knows something that you don't and sees things from a different perspective. Don't listen to form an argument. Listen to understand. Class of 2020, wow, pretty incredible year so far. I'm so grateful that you were all able to experience your graduation in person and not through a computer. A global pandemic brought the world to a screeching halt. It prevented us from seeing friends, from seeing family, from experiencing huge life events. But it also showed us we were able to accomplish even these unbelievably difficult times. It showed us that life does go on. It showed us how strong we can be as individuals, but also as a community. Your graduation class, as well as anything associated with these unique times, will always have an asterisk linked to it. You know, the things that we had to do or the things that we couldn't do. With you graduates, it was classes via the internet, varsity sports that weren't played, the school play that didn't go on, and the prom that you couldn't attend. My hope and vision for each of you is to not let that asterisk signify the things you weren't able to do, 
but let it be the shining star for the great things that the Ryan Nat class of 2020 will accomplish in their journeys ahead. Again, big congratulations to the class of 2020, and go Panthers. Good evening, Superintendent Ferrara, Principal Wilson, President Fasolino, and Board of Education Trustees. Ryan X staff, honored guests and family, and especially the members of the class of 2020. This year marks the 28th year the Rhinec Teachers Association has given a scholarship award to a hardworking, enthusiastic student. Recently, the RNTA renamed our award to honor the memory of all Rhinec staff who have passed on in recent years, among them Maureen Sullivan, whose memory founded the scholarship, and the more recently departed Charlie Colonese, Peter Segroy, uh, Cindy Foster, and Tony Cruz. The senior who receives this award must possess the qualities the Rhinec teachers hold dear, motivation and self-direction, an energetic commitment to learning, a belief in the value of service, and an understanding of the role that leadership plays in the success of the group. This year's recipient is a hardworking and driven student, and in many ways the social heartbeat of the class of 2020. He is a member of the Thespian Honor Society and has participated in four Rynek musical productions in a number of capacities, and has been a member of the art crew for three dramatic productions. This young man has worked as a counselor in training and a camp counselor for the Scarsdale Parks and Recreation Department, and also spent one summer as a performing arts supervisor. He has volunteered for the Southeast Consortium for Disabled Children and in his spare time loves acting. Cooking, especially baking, and throughout his high school career could be found in the Panther suit at Rydeck football and basketball games. Uh, he was my student for two years. We talked a lot. We had a lot of fun times. He's a great kid. Congratulations to this year's recipient of the RNTA Memorial Scholarship, Luke McNiff. Congratulations, Luke. Look at this. Parents, families, teachers, staff, and of course, hello to the class of 2020. <laughs> okay. It's such an honor to be talking to you, even if it's from your radios. Today, I wanted to talk about gratitude. I often feel like I'm bad at gratitude. I don't appreciate a beautiful sunny day or traveling to the ocean. I don't take the time to learn the name of the person who made my coffee. I take my health for granted, my job, even my ability to do online assignments. But perhaps most importantly, I take people in my life for granted and I fail to recognize how much they matter to me as often as I should. Gratitude is an expression that allows you to recognize the things that are good it's a spotlight that shines on the people that inspire you. It's a pencil that colors in emotions and blessings that are easily ignored. Gratitude is not some magical force that eliminates stress or negativity. It doesn't prevent loss, getting sick, or losing a job. But in those moments of stress, when I start shaking or feeling anxiety, I have learned to turn on gratitude. And right now, when moments of stress seem to surround us all, it matters more than ever. I recently read a story from StoryCorps, which is a project where people passing through Grand Central Station have the opportunity to record their life stories at these small recording booths. And while I was reading a, a couple stories from the project, one stuck out to me. It's titled, There's Always Room at His Table, and it details the story of Scott McCulley, who not wanting to spend Thanksgiving alone, placed an ad for a Thanksgiving dinner in the local paper. After a few people came that first year and had a wonderful time, he continued to host the dinner each year, and it grew. The people who come to this dinner come from all walks of life, and they often have no personal connection to Macaulay, but they come together to share a meal of blessings and gratitude. 
By simply not wanting to be alone on Thanksgiving, Macaulay has touched many lives by bringing people together in thanks. And reading this story has made me realize just how many people have touched my life, and all our lives for that matter, these past four, five, six, or even 13 years. The teachers who were there for us when we needed help, the coaches and teammates that shared in our victories and losses, the lifelong friends we made, the people we looked up to for guidance or inspiration, of course, our parents whose support made us who we are, the people who improve our lives that we often fail to recognize, custodial staff, mail carriers, grocery workers, and even the people we may never see again. Without them, none of us would be who we are today, so thank you. Oprah Winfrey said, be thankful for what you have, you'll end up having more. If you concentrate on what you do not have, you will never, ever have enough. As I said goodbye to one of my favorite people a few weeks ago, as she moved to Virginia, I found it hard not to cry because she was moving so far away. But it also reminded me how grateful I was for her, for her mentorship, her leadership. Pretty soon, we are all going to move away by heading to the next phase in our lives, no matter what that looks like. We'll meet new people, have new experiences, and grow. But that does not mean that we are losing the people that are important to us right now. The people that have touched us and the relationships that once mattered will continue to matter. As we all go forth into the next chapter of our lives, take a second, a minute, an hour, to think about the people that made you who you are. If I'm being honest, I don't say thank you to those I love nearly enough. But these past three months have forced me to realize what and who truly matters and how often I fail to recognize it. But gratitude shouldn't be limited to our closest connections. As Scott McCauley di McCauley's dinner shows, gratitude has the power to create a sense of interconnection among strangers, even if it's just for one night or in his case, just a meal. Right now, interconnection is more important than ever. Listen, nothing bad can ever come from expressing gratitude. In fact, you will be rewarded in a million ways with a simple thank you. So pay attention to the relationships you form and continue to form, no matter how small or large or seemingly insignificant. And reach out to someone you haven't seen in a while and tell them that you miss them. As I conclude this speech with a thank you, it is not merely a token gesture. It comes from deep in my heart. Thank you, Reinek, and thank you to the class of 2020. We did it. This year has been different on just about every front we can think of. In that spirit, the class of 2020 has decided to spend the money traditionally put aside for a gift on a donation to a charity of the grade's choice. The charity we chose is the New York City Coronavirus Emergency Relief Fund. This organization provides resources and services to essential workers, small businesses, and the most vulnerable in our society. And we are honored to present this year's senior gift in the amount of $1,000 to the New York City Coronavirus Task Force. Thank you for your generous gift. I have to say I'm not surprised by your choice for your class gift. You have been and continue to be an exceptionally caring and selfless group of young adults and wonderful role models. To the class officers, Sonia, Grace, Lucas V, Tiana, and Lucas P, thank you for your leadership. I know it was difficult to balance your own preferences with those of your classmates as we planned for commencement, so kudos to you. Seniors, while we might be separated by the metal and glass your cars are made of, I am beyond elated to be physically in the same location as all of you for the second time this week. Indeed, this is in stark contrast to the world of Google Meets, Zooms, screencast videos, FaceTime calls, Snaps, and I'm sure TikTok videos that have filled your days in recent months. Yet even with these digital communication tools that have enabled us to remain connected, I am certain we all realized just how much we missed 
and craved face-to-face -face human interaction. Along with missing social interaction, this pandemic has challenged us individually, as a family unit, as a school, as a community, and as a society. Albert Einstein once said, there are two ways to live your life. One is though nothing is a miracle, the other is as though everything is. Even in the midst of all the negative emotions and situations this pandemic caused, I choose to follow the latter par portion of Einstein's advice. If you think back to your sophomore year, in my first year at Rhinec, there was a bulletin board Mrs. Calcagney decorated in a corridor to greet you on your first day of school. It had a bunch of colors, a paintbrush, and a saying that read, attitude is the mind's paintbrush. It can color any situation. As you move into the next phase of your life, I hope you allow your mind to embrace the positives rather than the negatives. It is easy to get mired down thinking of what you lost, including memories and time with friends. Just remember that in the end, you have so much to be proud of. You persevered, figured out ways to remain engaged and motivated, found opportunities to reflect, spent time with your families, and engaged in community service. In short, you took this time to grow individually and cultivate the various skills, grit, perseverance, mindfulness, distress tolerance, to name a few. All these skills will enable you to pivot in the face of future challenges. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. This celebration is just as special and unique as each of you. Next, we have a short video presentation to help you remember your time at Rhinec. If you see junior Ethan Chin around town, and he's actually a guest in row four, please thank him for creating this wonderful video for you.
Now it's the moment you've all been waiting for, the presentation of diplomas. Will row one please step out of your car and to the front of your vehicle, please? Row one and one A. So this first, it looks like two rows, but in the diagram it was one A and one B. Grace B. West. Hyunjae Lee. Sonia K. Finkenberg. Grace. Ella Kajowski. Lucas Vienne. Tiana Olivia Cologne. Lucas E. Pasquina. Mohammed Abdallah. Zachary Aber. Nitsa Liliana Aguilar Perez. Atika Anka Alradi. Dulce Barrientos Anahi. Adolfo Daniel Barrios. Isabella Bagazzo. Genaro Bianco. Jessica Bonilla. Ryan M. Boron. Liam Avery Bravo. Emma Camille Buknovich. Gianna Marie Calcagni. Justin Cantu. Mario L. Caparelli. Adesua Carlton. John Jack Kenneth Cavanaugh III. Paige Cephaloni. Sorry, at this time I ask row two A and B to please step out of the car, the graduates. Eric V. Chafin. Veronica Salento. Emily Rose Cohen.
Michael Colasanti. Sean Diamond. Evan Thomas Denome. Kate, Caitlin Dorfman. I would like to invite Rynek teacher Mrs. Dawn Drace to present a diploma to her son, Sean Robert Drace. Evan Anthony Dunn. Lisa Marie Engelin. Christina Ray Esposito. Matias Fernandez. Sarah Patricia Ferreira. Adam M. Galluccio. At this time, I'd like to invite Rynek teacher, Mr. David Golden, to present a, a diploma to his son, Benjamin M. Golden. <laughs> Emmanuel Gonzalez. Corey Greenland. Rebecca Guzman. Ronan Heaton. Kayla Elisa Holman. Kota Hayuga. Hideo Ishihara. Cynthia Michelle Lanuza. Nathan Benjamin Lesser. Jonathan Ramos Marcuse. Luke Mascio Pinto. Luke McNiff. Caitlin Kristen Meyer. David Milliken. Juliana Michelli. Michael Thomas Miller.
Robert Parsons Miller. At this time, I'd like to ask row 3A and B to please step out of your vehicle. Joelle Sean Miranda. Alexander Monreal. Elaine Alexa Musa. I would like to invite Board of Education Trustee Mrs. Patty Nischelski to present a diploma to her son, Colin Reese Nischelski. <laughs> Alessandro M. Orjuela. Morgan Parker. Jennifer Ann Paul. Sarah Marie Pommier. Angela Praldakaj. Matthew Quartararo. Owen R. Robertson. Carlos Ariel Rodriguez. Anna L. Romani. Harry E. Rosas. Natalia Rosito. Nicholas Michael Sabia. Samantha Faith Sandoval. Miguel Santiago. Jonathan Francis Shin. Juliana Denise Pereira da Silva. Julianne Connor Spencer. Anthony P. Sturbins. Maxwell E. Thurer. Kyle C. Tracy. Midori Sonoda. Julia G. Tufo. Lucille Eve Marie Velixen. I would like to invite former Brett Board of Education trustee Mr. Dan Weiss to present a diploma to his son Timothy Weiss. Max Zanjacomi.
Nayeli Julissa Zarate. Yu Zhishudin. Zhishudin. Before we continue, I'd like to share a brief message from Senator, Senator Shelley Mayer. A few final reminders before our final video presentation. Hi, this is State Senator Shelley Mayer, wishing congratulations to the Rhineneck Class of 2020. I'm so thrilled and proud of all of you to have accomplished this graduation this year under most challenging circumstances. Congratulations to you on what you have achieved. Thank you to your teachers and school administrators and everyone who helped you get there, coaches too, to your parents and family who supported you in this tough time. We're thrilled for you. We wish the best for the next stage of your journey. Congratulations and all my best wishes. So a few final reminders announcements before our final video presentation. Today's commencement was televised live and recorded by LMC Media, our community TV and media station. So you will be able to rewatch this ceremony if you'd like. A special thank you to, your, their, sorry, to their volunteers and staff for their service to our school community. Special thank you to the county police and especially to Mr. Frank Carreri and the Playland staff for making. <laughs> At the conclusion of this video, I ask that you follow staff directions to exit the ven venue. Have a safe drive home. It is with great pleasure that I present the members of the class of 2020 who have successfully completed a course of study prescribed by the Board of Education and approved by the State of New York and are entitled to be awarded these diplomas. Please join me in congratulating the Rhineck High School class of 2020.